would you be scared to meet your Lord today? Hey, everybody, this is Pastor Justin Walker with The Whole Truth. We're going through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. I've been on a mission since January 1st of 2020 to get as many people into God's Word as possible, and I want you to come along with me. So grab a Bible, turn it open to Genesis 43. We're in the story of Joseph. His brothers who hated him sold him into slavery. Joseph ascended to power after 11 years of slavery and two years in prison. He is now second in command to Pharaoh. He's been second in command for seven years of his life. There's a great famine in the land, but Joseph was smart with the wisdom of the Lord and the Holy Spirit on him. He saved up food. His brothers have had to come and ask him for food. He sent them away and basically was making them admit their fault. He was he sent them away. They don't know that it's Joseph. They don't know it's their brother. It's been 20 years since they've seen their brother. And so they didn't know it was their brother. He was speaking through an interpreter. Joseph sent them away harshly. He sent them away and told them that they needed to bring Benjamin back. But of course, what Joseph was doing was bringing them to a place of honesty with themselves, honesty with God, a place of repentance. And that's what God is doing with us. He wants to bring us to a place of being honest with him and repenting. And that's what we're going to see today. They have to come back to Joseph. And remember with me that Joseph paints a picture. He is a typology of Christ in the Bible. Joseph paints a picture of Christ all throughout the Bible. Check this out. Here's Joseph in Genesis 43, verse verse 15. So the men took that present that was some almonds and some balm and some fruit from the land. They took the present and, and they take Benjamin. I'm still in verse 15. And they took double money in their hand and arose and went down to Egypt and they stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of the house, of his house, take these men to my home and slaughter an animal and make ready for these men will dine with me at noon. Then the man did as Joseph ordered and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Do you see this? Joseph has been waiting for these men to be honest and to bring Benjamin with them. The last time they came, they didn't bring Benjamin. The last time that they came, they were still claiming that Joseph had died in the wilderness, knowing that they had sold Joseph. And Joseph knew they had sold him, but they weren't willing to be honest with themselves yet. Joseph sent them away. He wanted to bring them to a place of repentance. That's where they are. They're coming to a place where they're having to admit the truth, and they've come back with Benjamin. They're obviously wanting to be honest. And look at this. Joseph is ready to to receive them. This is the truth of Christ. Christ wants to receive you. He stands ready to receive you. Now, the brothers aren't going to see it that way. They don't know it's Joseph. They just think this is some mean Egyptian guy who treated them harshly, and they honestly think that this is their punishment for what they did all those years ago. It's been the unspoken thing in the back of their mind for all of these years. They sold Joseph into slavery. And now they've had to live with that guilt all of these years. Their guilt has been eating at them. And so they think that this is a punishment, but that's not what God's doing. God is actually working. He is providing. He is moving in providence on the lives of these 12 sons and in Joseph for that matter. And so Joseph stands ready to receive them, just as Christ, who stands ready to receive you. If you, uh, We won't turn there right now, but if you looked at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And any man who will open, I will enter in and dine with him. Jesus will come into your life. He will save you. He will give you an eternity with him. And he's ready to do so. We don't always feel that way. He does. It's us. Look, look at the brothers. Look what happened. So this is in verse uh, 18. Now the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, it is because of the money which was returned in our sacks the first time that we brought, that we are, are, uh, that that we are brought in so that he may make a case against us and seize us to take us as slaves with our donkeys. So when they drew near, verse 19, when they drew near the steward of the of Joseph's house, they talked with him at the door of the house and said, oh, sir, we indeed came down the first time to buy food, but it happened when we came to the encampment that we opened up our sacks to, uh, and there each man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. And so we have brought in it, so we have brought it in our hand and we have brought down other money in our hand to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. So they kind of went over, um, they went over what happened. The first time they came to meet Joseph and they didn't know it was him, when they were sent away, Joseph gave them all the supplies they needed to survive. 
And he sent them away, but he took their money and he put it back in their sacks. And may I remind you that this is true. You cannot buy salvation. Christ has paid the price. Joseph had paid the price. Joseph was a slave. Joseph was in prison. Joseph interpreted the dream. Joseph was the one who ascended to the right hand of Pharaoh. Joseph was the one in charge. It was Joseph's work that was going to save these men. It was not their work. It was not their money. It was the fact that Joseph was going to be gracious to them. Joseph did not have to give them anything. He could have given them food and taken all of their money, but he didn't do any of that. Rather, he gave them the provisions they needed to survive. He gave them the food and he didn't take any of their money. Now they've come back and they're trying to justify that. And have you ever been in this situation? I love what the brothers do. This is like, uh, this is like the person who chews out the, the cashier at Walmart when, uh, you know, they've opened their product and their product didn't have the, all the, the right stuff in it or something. You know, so you ever done that? You've opened up a box with not all the right stuff and you see somebody standing at Walmart or a Target and they're chewing out the cashier. What does the cashier have to do with it? You know, here's the steward of the house. They go to the steward. This is this is the servant of Joseph. They go to the servant and they're saying to the servant of Joseph, they say, oh, listen, the last time we came, we opened up our sacks and all of our money was back in our sacks, but we didn't do that. So we've brought all that money and we brought more money and we're just here to buy food. We, we weren't trying to steal anything. And by the way, do we see people doing that today? Do you, can you think of people today that feel, and I am not picking on any one particular religion here. I am asking the true question, Do you have you ever seen this? I've seen it as a pastor. When people feel they need to confess to me, they, they say, I need to tell you something. And then they begin to start confessing things to me. And many times, and some of you watching this video might know, I might have done it to you. I'll put my hand up and I'll say, whoa, I don't need to know this. You need to confess this to the one who can forgive you. You need to tell this to the one who can do something. They're confessing to the steward. They're just so nervous. They're being brought into Joseph's house. This is a real story, real account. They're being brought into Joseph's house, but they're confessing to Joseph or to Joseph's servant instead of to Joseph. Look what his servant says. I love this. He says in verse 23, but he said, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And then he brought Simeon out to them. So for just a moment, they're begging with this servant and he goes, chill. It was me. Your God is with you. Your God is with you, and he's the one who, who who helped you. I had your money. I put your money back in your sack. You're confessing to me. I'm telling you I know. I'm the one who put it back in your sack. I didn't take your money because Joseph had told him not to. And so here the steward goes and gets their brother, Simeon, who'd been kept back in Egypt waiting for Benjamin to come back. Simeon was brought out to them. So now all of them are united, and the steward is saying, peace, Unto you. And by the way, that's what the stewards of God should be doing today. Those who are ministers of God, that's you and I who are believers in the Lord Jesus, that should be our battle cry is peace. Peace be unto you. The good news, the gospel that we're supposed to take to the world, that word gospel literally means good news. We have good news. You don't have to be scared to meet the Savior. The Savior wants to save you. Check this out. Look, uh, this is verse 24. So the man brought the men into Joseph's house. That's the servant brought the men into Joseph's house. And he gave them water and washed their feet. He gave their donkeys feed. And then he made the present ready for Joseph's coming at noon for their, for they heard that he would eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present, which was in their hand, which was in their hand into the house. And they bowed down before him to the earth. And then he asked them about their well being. And he, and he said, is your father well? The old man whom you spoke of, is he alive? And they answered, your servant, our father is in good health and he is still alive. And they bowed their heads down prostrated and, and prostrated themselves. I love this picture. They see Joseph and they bring Joseph a gift. Now, remember, Joseph is the one who saved up so much grain in the land of Egypt that they had to quit counting it. It was that much grain. It was enough grain. It was one-fifth of all the land for seven years in a row. And they were doing that to store up enough food to make it through the famine because God had warned him. Joseph had all of it. And here come the brothers and the way that they think they're going to appease him the way that they're going to appease Joseph is they bring a little gift. They bring some fruit. The, uh, Jacob literally had said a little bit of balm. D- do you think that Joseph needs a little bit of balm? Does he need a little bit of almonds or a little bit of fruit? Joseph was doing just fine at this point. Why? Because Joseph was the right hand, was at the right hand of Pharaoh. And this reminds me very much of us. We, we do the same thing. Uh, 
And I'm not saying it's bad to bring a gift to the Lord. It's lovely to bring a gift to the Lord. Joseph didn't reject the gift. Okay, we're not talking about the Lord rejecting your gift like like Cain and Abel. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is this. You can't bribe God. And if you tried, imagine how worthless that gift really would be. If you're trying to bargain with God, God, I'll, I'll do this for you if you'll do this for me. I, I hate to be the one to have to tell you this, but God doesn't need you. And he doesn't need your gift. He wants you and he wants your gift, but you're not going to bribe him. You're not going to like convince him. He doesn't need convincing because he's ready to save you. He's ready to dine with you. They brought the gift. I can imagine as they put a little bit of fruit before Joseph, probably like right in the next room, he's probably got a spread of fruit and nuts and, and food on the table in the room next to him, but they bring him a little platter and he says, well, Thank you for the cheese tray. I mean, that's kind of, do you get what I'm saying here? Like, it was a small gift compared to what Joseph had, but he wanted their gift. Don't, don't misread that. He wanted it, but he didn't need it. He wasn't going to be bribed by it. They did, he didn't bring out Simeon because they gave him the fruit tray. Do you understand what I'm saying? He brought out Simeon and he brought them in to dine with them because he wanted to dine with them. And that's what the Lord wants to do with you. He wants to dine with you. And check this out. Verse 29, then he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, is this your younger brother of whom you spoke to me? Remember, he hasn't seen him in 20 years. Is this your younger brother? And they said uh, that you spoke to me. And, and he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Now his heart yearned for his brother. So Joseph made haste, sought somewhere to weep, and he went into his chamber and wept there. And then he washed his face and came out and restrained himself and said, serve the bread. And so they set him a place uh, by himself and then and, and them by themselves and the Egyptians who ate with him uh, by themselves because the Egyptians could not eat food with the Hebrews for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, uh, the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth. Uh, the men looked in astonishment at one another and then uh, he took servings to them before him. But Benjamin, but Benjamin's serving was five times as much as any of theirs. And so they drank and were merry with him. Now, this picture, as we get to the end, Joseph goes off and he weeps when he meets Benjamin. And I would again say to you, the same is true. The Lord loves when we come to him, when we when we come unto him. When you come unto the Lord, the angels rejoice. When you put your faith in him, the angels rejoice. God is happy that you've chosen to serve him, and he is happy to see you. These tears that Joseph cries for Benjamin are tears of joy because he sees his brother for the first time in 20 years. His brother, who he has not seen, he now sees. And he now uh, gets to sit down and have a meal with him. And, uh, and they, the Egyptians, they were very segregated people. And by the way, God knew what he was doing by putting the Hebrew people into Egypt because the Egyptians were so separated people, they were so segregated as a people that they wouldn't intermingle. If the Hebrews had stayed in Canaan, there's a chance that they would have intermingled. Canaanites didn't have a problem intermarrying. We've already seen that with uh, Judah, who uh, married a Canaanite woman. They, they have no problem to intermarry in with the Canaanites, but God was preserving this line. And so even though they're going into Egypt and it's going to be hard, the Hebrews will remain Hebrews until they grow in substantial number for a time. So God was providentially working in the, uh, in the lives of these sons. And so he brings them into Egypt under Joseph. Joseph has wept. He went and washed his face. He comes, he sits down and he's sitting by himself and the brothers are sitting over here, but he does something very interesting. And I'm going to close here with these last two, two points that Joseph goes and sets the brothers in birth order from oldest to youngest. And the brothers were astonished. He, he obviously knew something of them. They still don't recognize him as Joseph, but, but he knew, he, he knew them and he knows them. In Christ, he knows you. And when we think about Christ knowing us, if you think, if the brothers were to think back of Joseph knowing them, I'm sure the fear would set in. As a matter of fact, we're going to see that, that the fear will set in when they realize it's Joseph and they realize that Joseph knows them and knows what they did. That's how we are with God. When we start to think about how God knows us, there's a scary point there. But what God wants from you is for you to put your faith and your trust in him. He is the good father who has sent his son Jesus to die for you. And he's not done testing the brothers. I love how Joseph puts one more test. He gives Benjamin five times the amount that he gives all the other brothers. 
Remember in the past when his father, Joseph's father, Jacob, treated him in a special way, the brothers got jealous, threw him in a pit. Joseph now treats Benjamin in a special way, but look at how we end. And so they drank and were merry with him. They didn't get jealous of Benjamin. They were rejoicing that Joseph, who was Lord of the land, wanted to sup with them. That's what God wants from you. He wants you to keep your eyes on your own paper and to put your focus on him and only him. Your relationship with him, not other people's relationships with him, but your relationship with him. He wants a relationship with you. So I ask you again as we close today, would you be scared to meet the Lord today? He wants to meet you. Would you trust him in that? Would you put your faith in him? All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you tomorrow with Genesis chapter 44. See you then.